Beautiful sound of the Earth Day, giving some energy for the second edition of my sound magazine on my YouTube channel. It's a full-on underground uh, magazine on the secrets, the deep insights on contemporary sound culture. And I'm very happy you are blending in. And the sound magazine, the purpose is to give some insights into the global sound culture from the perspective of integral sound work. And yes, and some get some news around, get some thoughts and, and actually, and for sure, some communication. So if you feel like you, I don't know, you want to ask a question or you want to make a proposal or, or, or anything you want me to speak about on the topic of sound culture, okay? please feel free to communicate. And now the version number one was kind of live streaming and we had some issues like in terms of getting the stream properly delivered. So now the difference is that today is it's not really live, it happened a little bit before, but in the moment you are watching it, because, like for the first time, in case you're, 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 you're subscribed and you got the attention button and said, yes, Jens is going on with the Sound Magazine. And in the moment it, of the premiere, I will be with you typing on the chat so you can even ask me question right now. So Jens, say something, write something. Ah, mm, it works, fantastic. Okie doke, so let's jump into and we uh, continue exactly at the point where we stopped last time. It's an amazing box, it's huge. What is in the box? Guess what is in the box? So last time somehow I screwed it up a little bit, but you could hear it and somehow, well, doesn't matter. So th this is what was in the box last time. Da -da 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 -da. Ah, oh, ho, 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 ho. It's a, it's a window for a ship to build in. You can look through, right? No, of course not. It has to do with sound. And it is a handmade, version of what we know as ocean drum and uh, and the ocean drum uh, uh, I think first time I saw it in uh, was Remo it was very a uh, very rough instrument then there was a good one for uh, 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 like 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 from of course minor is everywhere so the minor was good but they call it wave drum so and now the special thing is this is handmade and it has three levels of activity so this sounds uh, ocean and it's called theta drum because of the sensitivity that all the little uh, uh, bowls or balls are like made of and blend. And so let's give us a try how this sounds. that this is not playing the ocean teeter drum for half an hour. I, I, I feel like I want to do it because it's so, um, what is attractive? Well, it's so sensitive. And so when sound is activating the, uh, let's say the, uh, what, what, is, what is sound doing? I mean, it is, uh, it is activating the potential of being sensitive with your feeling and observing how resonance phenomena happens in your body. So this is a perfect instrument to be very, um, first of all, when you play it, to train it, to train yourself be, uh, to act sensitive. And if you handle these instruments in the uh, following the 
philosophy of integral sound work, then you are aware that um, every sound starts with silence. So you go to the point of silence, and then with very subtle movement, you go to the point where the sound starts, then you build it up in a beautiful wave, and then you get the sound back to silence. Sounds touches silence is one of the, uh, let's say, the dogmas in the way to act out um, organic sound music. So, and yes, and this was a game, so somebody uh, win the prize, and actually it, it was Tamara from, uh, she's even in Hamburg, so she was the first to mention Ocean Drum, and so she got a prize, and she got a tuning fork that you can choose by herself. So, yes, guess what is in the box? So this was the starting in, into the sound magazine. And um, so speaking about the sound magazine, so, so, so what is it that I, that I want to do? And uh, what I want to do with the magazine is I want to keep up with something that started um, years ago. And, and, and years ago, I will dive down and I will be up in a second because I, I, just, I just went into my archive and picked up some material and what started years ago, and by this, and, and I want to take this opportunity to, um, to greet my old friend Frank Mukdoschenker. I think he lives in Berlin these days. And he was a legend in terms of promoting instrumental New Age meditation music. So this is a catalog, it's from 96, and I even have some titles before. So this was even, a, what, I had one from 94 even. 94, 95. So this was in the beginning of this movement that we are experiencing today on a huge level. And at that time, uh, the, the, the music was, was uh, uh, not known really. And, and we were sitting together and finding words, finding descriptions, finding genres and put them together. So we had a catalog every year. It says 1,300 CDs. It says a different dimension of music. So sound music, what it does is it, it, it's, it's, it, it's expected or it should be or is meant to get your mind, your senses into another dimension. So now the question is, are these dimension existing in real or is this a fantasy kind of mind made up concept and, and, and well, contemporary sound musicians don't have this question at all because looking at, uh, at looking at the stories of the ethnologist or the anthropologist, we are fully aware that ever since man exists, humans exist, we had concepts of different dimensions and that were even would be, that would inhabit like, like beings without having bodies. Is that something weird? To think about it or is it normal? Well, today it's normal to pretend that this is not existing at all, except some very few people. They are, but they are some kind of off society. So even if we have an overall construct, for example, have a Christian uh, belief in our Western world, even now it's not that clear anymore because many people are Buddhists and they also have a concepts of how dimensions would work for individual being. So this is a complex world and ever since um, like in my life which started 1984 being make, when I made the decision I want to become a sound musician because I want to explore these options to dive into or to encounter dimensions and I don't want to use traditional concepts where I had to learn structures. I want to just dive into it and make a connection. And sound music, particularly gongs, uh, was, the, was my way, my starting in, and it's still going on today. And so we had this time, uh, it was the time before the internet even was, was, was around. So where we, where we had genres and we had so many different titles and they're all describing different aspects of what a mind can think of, different traditions. And, and we did this for many years, and later even on we had a magazine, Aquarius Music Journal. So in the great old times, uh, where everything was kind of analog, we built catalogs, we were collecting CDs, and today it's all more uh, virtual, right? We, we don't really have 
that much products anymore. Some collectors do have. And today, if you want to collect stuff, man, you should, um, not you should, uh, you know, get instruments. You know, get the real stuff. We, we, it's good to have the, 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 the uh, digitalized, the, the audio artifacts in terms of CDs, vinyl, but the sound music lives from the real moment. And if you want to get your mood into what this moment could be about, we have um, one department uh, that offers the option to really get into the real thing. I hold the heaven in my hands. Oh no. Oh, this was so fast. I was I was all already in trance. So I will I'm going to read today of the book from Lee G. It's the it's the book of reads of manners of customs and it's an old Chinese uh, it's, it's a Chinese uh, uh, traditional book that was quoted in, uh, by Hans Kusto in the Cosmic Octave Connection. And when I went to China, I was very happy that these uh, sources are authentic and they fit very well. So, Li Ji uh, from the Book of Reeds, Manners and Customs. So one must examine the sounds in order to understand the tones. One must examine the notes in order to understand the music. One has to examine the music to understand the commandments. Thus, the way of order becomes perfect. If you don't understand sounds, you can't talk about sounds. If you don't understand the notes, you can't talk about music. Whoever understands the music thereby also reaches the secrets of the custom, who has Experienced both custom and music owns life. Life shows itself. Life shows itself in experience. Mm. So th there are ways, like you just let it, let the effect of the words inspire you, or we can discuss it. But the way we discuss things in Germany is by opening a bottle of wine and just running through it. Right, so uh, uh, I don't have wine now here on the table because the table is too short and also it's too early to drink wine. But what I understand from this is the need to look at details before we come to things. So we have the tendency to judge about things that we see or that appear to us with a certain image. And if you are into sound music, you go to the little moment, you go to the tone, and from the tone you build up the music. And then you check the environment where the music happens in. And then, so this gives you a sensitivity for the complexity which is so much needed, rather than having fundamentalistic, simplified explanations of a reality which in Reality is a multiverse and not just a simple thing. Okay, so and this is what sound music to me actually is, is useful. Sound music helps to, to get more into the variety of phenomena. And in between, if you said, okay, but I still like to get my mind busy, and or so besides uh, reading the old Liji, well, we have one department, one chapter in the sound magazine, and that deals with contemporary stuff. Shh, we're in a library. I can do fanfare. So we have something so great. It's a book of the month. It's a new book. It's so new that, well, I, 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 I just made it one chapter. And this book is from Martin Blaise. So everybody who is into sound music knows the name Martin Blaise because he is one of the, if not the most worldwide 
uh, known and famous and successful sound silversmith. He lives in North Germany. As we all know, that the contemporary sound culture has its epicenter in North Germany. And this book by Martin Blazer, it's called Butterfly Wings, Gong Sound and Transformation. It's amazing. It is, I wasn't, I mean, uh, I heard the gossip and I was wondering and I, was, I wasn't really excited. But now as I see it, I said, oh, this is, this, is, this is so fantastic. First of all, it's beautifully made with, with lots of uh, pictures, and it shows all the gongs he ever made. For example, yeah, the, this is the Beyond Gong. Of course, it's, it has also links to the YouTubes, because Martin is, is, is exceptionally doing well in giving out documentaries on how he is doing it and why he is doing it. Because his concern is to combine handcraft traditional handcraft, but with the concept of spirituality. So what is the purpose of doing for what he's doing? And this book is, uh, is telling, he, he's telling his story, and he is also, um, well, he, he, ta he talks about all the instruments that he did, that he runs through, and for people who are, oh, this is Paige, I mean, ah, like, like I, I'm very sure that, that Sean, you, you want this book for sure, and, and Matt wants it, and Steve wants it, and Madva for sure also. I will no, this is the sound magazine is about communicating what's going on. And this book on gongs, seven cosmic treasures, and telling the story about his first gong. This is contemporary uh, gong history uh, in 2021. So a very old instrumental, let's say, um, culture now in its contemporary form. So this is a book I recommend very much this month. Uh, Martin Blaise, Butterfly Wings, Gong and Sound Transformation. And as it says here, it's about gong, sound, and the transformation process that Martin did. So wonderful book. It's a must-have. And if you, like, you say, oh, I'm not sure if I really want this book, well, then think of someone who knows, who loved the book, and you get it for this person. It's a collector's item for sure, and you are supporting a, you are supporting a good man. Hmm. All right, book of the month. So, so now what happens is when we are so overwhelmed with a, such a good news, and now the book is not here yet, I'm sure you're going to order it right now, and you end the ends, oh my God, he already has the book. How do I get the book of Martins? So in between, I'm waiting for my order for the delivery of this book. I'm very happy that now I follow the instrument, uh, the insights of the next chapter. The instrument of the month. Last first edition was the sound bowl because, as, as I said, the sound bowl is the first instrument of contemporary sound music where we explore the world with sounds and explore our inner world, but also with the sound in the outside. And the tuning fork is the most instrument that everyone should have in his, has in its pocket or at least it should be next close to your toothbrush. Because in our culture, we invented the technology of, br of, of brushing tooth in order to clean the teeth and prevent our body from being poisoned by all kinds of sticky things in teeth, and for a reason. And, and we hardly don't know anybody who is not brushing teeth, but who many, how, uh, who is taking care in the same time of his thoughts and his emotions. So after running through a day, meeting all kinds of crazy situations, being influenced or affected or infected by all kinds of vibrations, so what do you do to, um, so, so, so when you go to sleep, so the same way you brush your teeth. So now with a tuning fork, all you do, of course you want to be sure you have the right frequency at hand, and um, one proposal is 136 because this is the frequency that expresses the vibration of the earth around the sun. And this is a, a, a tone that from its researches has been found out to be a calming down or balancing uh, effect. So you would activate it. And 
and, and, and in the moment you feel it vibrating in your arm, in your hand, then you pick up this feeling and with this feeling, intuitively you move it, the tuning fork to your fourth head. You don't need specifically find a spot to put it out, but you'll just, you just draw it like you would comb your hair, but I can, I can, I can promise you will feel the vibration even on the forehead or on, even on the front lobe, which is the, from the evolutionary biology, the, the latest part that is responsible for digesting what we see, what we experience through the day. So when you have this, and in the intuitive manner, also using the left hand, but just, you know, making kind of, you know, fancy movement that you feel like you want to do. And while through doing this, you're activating your intuitive, intuitive intelligence and allow the integration of unconscious emotional patterns that you had no chance to act out during the day and while doing this you will uh, uh, rise the quality of this moment of being present in with uh, uh, resonating with the sound of the universe this is what sound music is good for so the instrument of the month no way to live without a tuning fork get it oh so the idea is that you feel the vibration, you can have the effect, and you not necessarily must spot the point. Phonophorese is a big topic in the world of sound music. And just recently, I had the opportunity to have an interview with a good friend whom I met years ago, and she's professionally involved in uh, researching tuning forks and what one can do with it. So please enjoy the interview with my Beloved friend, Ishira Hart. Hey, Jens. Thanks so much for having me on. How are you? I'm very well. Yeah, Thank you. So I've been on a journey with 111 for many years. And I started finding all these different therapies that actually have been used on the planet since the early 1940s. For those of you who are into solfeggio, you may have heard about 111 or may not know it's the difference tone between two solfeggio. Say we take three, nine, six. The lower one to that, or the pair to it, is two, eight, five. This gives a difference for 111. Or we can look at four, one, seven and five, twenty-eight. The difference between this is 111. Is that difference between all the solfeggio, or just in these particular you're just mentioning? If you look at the eighteen frequencies of the Zobe, which is the wider number set of the solfeggio, you have 12 pairs with 18 frequencies. If you only have six of the frequencies, then you have four pairs. How did you come across that? When was the moment you realized that? Oh gosh, it's going back many years ago. Uh, I think it was when I started looking at binaural beats and appreciating how important they were and started to look at the maths of, of it. Um, I think it was also working with Jane of Jane Math Magics. He was looking at um, numbers and we started working together quite a lot with the power of numbers and decoding a lot of the solfeggio and noticing this um, interesting connection with 111 and how it starts to be found in Vedic mathematics. And that got me really go going a lot deeper into it. So, yeah, 111 is amazing. We can use it physically, we can use it mentally, we can use it emotionally, and we can use it spiritually. And I like to call it a master frequency because it does so many things for us. So if we think about the mental benefits, well, 2008, I think it was UCLA did research and they showed that 111, it causes a temporary shift into the right hemisphere of the brain. Why is that important? Well, most of us are predominantly in the left side of our brain. And we need the right, that's the intuitive side, that's the problem solving, that's the big picture. And if we're too much in the left, then we can't have access to the right. And it's so important during this time where how we use technology, it switches our brain, and that means we're not fully focused and we're not fully accessing all of our faculties. And then if we look at um, other mental benefits, it also activates the part of the brain that relates to empathy. This is research done by Princeton University. Why is that important? Well, if we think about in today's world, it's so important for us to deepen our self-love, particularly at this time. 
And of course, when we deepen our love for self, we can have more compassion for other people too. And then we have the emotional benefits. Well, it stimulates beta endorphins, which is very good for uplifting our mood. It's been used in the 1940s, since the 1940s with Russia and used for insomnia. It's used for learning difficulties. It's used for stress relief. And then other benefits because of the beta endorphins, it's also really good for pain relief. And we may think, oh, well, maybe it's just for headaches. Well, it's so strong, it can actually be used for heroin addiction as a, as a chemical, as a non-invasive um, sonic uh, replacement for methadone. And that's a, that's a therapy called NET from the doctor, Dr. Meg Patterson. And then we have, um, so we've done mental, emotional, physical, it starts to move energy, it can energize us. It will, if you place it on the body and you start to become aware of where you're holding tension, where you might have stuck energy. And if we breathe into that, we can actually consciously start to release any kind of the tension that we do sometimes hold. And that can be from the past as well. It's also keying into the main firing frequency of the cerebellum, which is connected to the reptilian brain. So it's fight, flight, or freeze. It's helping reset that. And that's so important for trauma. And then we have the spiritual benefits. Well, if we look at Vedic mass and we look at the magic square of the sun, which is six lines, it's six lines of 111. And 111 is actually the intelligence of the sun. What does that mean? Well, I like to call it God consciousness. Uh, solar, whether we call it Buddha, Krishna, Christ, it is that activation of the light within. We can find this in ancient sound temples like Newgrange in Ireland, or we can go to the Hypogeum in Malta. And if we sit there or we stand there, the Newgrange is interesting. It's actually aligned to the sunrise of winter solstice. And this is an energy where it helps us unify with everything around us. So we tune in spiritually, we tune in with the earth, we expand our energy. And in that place, everything lines up. So we're more tuned in and more aware. And I've worked with, more recently, with Dr. John, uh, Dr. No, John Stuart Reed, and we've done some beautiful research with the cymoscope, looking at 111 and seeing what it looks like. And we have found that it actually starts to key into the DNA. And this is actually linking to another scientist Dr. Robert Langridge's DNA work. So it's, bent in, it's benefiting us mentally, emotionally, physically, and spiritually. So I definitely call it a master frequency. And for us, we are in turbulent times. If you had to choose one tuning fork, I would get this frequency because it's helping you tune back into the true nature of who you are. And in that place, no fear is possible. Wow, this is a good message. Uh, you're, you're, you're so inspiring, and I really appreciate the service you deliver to, to everybody, to people on planet Earth. You are a fantastic example for doing so well in the new science. Thank you so much. Pleasure having you in the Sound Magazine, and looking forward to see you, well, hopefully in Bali. Yeah, come visit. Thanks so much, Jens. Check out my website, ishiraheart.net. And I've also got a tuning fork course, many tuning fork courses, but one specifically for the Solfeggio. Thank you. Yeah, that was so nice uh, meeting. This is, yeah, it's, it's, the, it's, the, it's the modern way you do it. You just meet people on the internet. Well, but no, let's get, let's get serious a little bit. Um, so I have, we have many friends out there and I'm completely aware that we as practitioners, sound practitioners or sound musicians or sound teachers, however, we are facing a variety of phenomena and one uh, department of this phenomena is, let's say, is, is a whole bunch of myths delivered by people who think they have a clever marketing. And if somebody who is new to the area of sound healing, and now we have to ask ourselves, should we even use the word sound healing? 
because is there anything that gives this word a right to exist in the meaning of the word sound healing? Well, for everyone who is working with sound, this question is, is, is not existing because we have experienced it so many times. But still, there is a, in the moment it comes to the marketing, then uh, sometimes it gets a little bit uh, kind of itchy. And there is this, for example, a new Facebook group. It's called Sonic Fiction, where I see a lot of people giving out quite of some energy to get into the details. But so my suggestion is, if we experience a phenomena, rather let us decide to see what it is or what's, what, what's behind there, what, it, what could it be, rather of identifying something from its negative phenomena, right? And it's very interesting to speak about frequencies. And, and as Ashira said, there are a lot of people researching from different anchors, different perspectives. So let's appreciate the variety of perspectives and let's uh, uh, invest our energy in seeing what is, the, what, is, what is the knowledge, what is the science that unifies this, uh, this uh, contemporary culture, sound culture, sound healing. Okay? So, um, yeah, feel welcome to also to connect Shira, follow her links, follow her inspiration. I certainly will do. And um, so, and in case you said, oh my God, this is, I am lost so much information. So what can I do? I'm overwhelmed. Well, no reason to overwhelm, to be overwhelmed because we have the sound music, we have the signs of the frequency and we have the option to get us back into the here and now in a focused way anytime wherever you are and we have this special chapter to give you some orientation in the vast cosmos so the frequency of the month. So I decided for the Earth day, the vibration of the Earth spinning around itself, which happens once in 86,400 seconds. Ha, huh, now I screwed up my mind. No, it happens once within the period of 86,400 seconds. Yes, that's completely right. Now I, I, I should trust myself more. Now, this is one day, is, uh, takes 86,400 seconds. So now, if we define frequencies, a frequency is how many times something is vibrating or moving or shaking within a second. Now, this is the agreement of how we look at this measure. So, if it takes 86,400 seconds to complete one, how many times does it spin within one second? So, and this is pure, simple math, that it's not suspicious math. math. It's, uh, I, I put this out to Michael. Michael, you know whom I'm talking to. I hope you see this. So, it's one under 86,400. This is the formula. So, you get to a number that is zero point and then you have four zeros and 116 hertz vibrations per second. So this is something, this is a, of course, a vibration, a tone that we cannot hear it. But we experience this vibration through the period of the Earth spinning around itself within one day, within 24 hours, which is 86,400 seconds. So now we have to use the principle of the octave. Using the principle of the octave means is that we double the number of a frequency and we have exact the same note, just on a uh, uh, other level. So on the, double the number and it's an octave higher. And you have the same note. So imagine the piano, a G is a G on every octave, wherever you would play it. The interval of the G, uh, the interval of the octave is the basic fundamental law of any harmonic 
um, uh, a, a phenomena or mathematic or way a vibration happens. The octave, there is nothing. Uh, uh, the octave is everything. So, and now when we have this uh, number of the Earth circling around itself, which is zero point, then four zeros, one, one, six uh, 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 vibrations per second, we need to activate this 24 times, and then we come to the tone of a, a, a G, we come to 194 hertz, which is a G, and this, so the G is the tone of the Earth's day. And the tone, for example, in this, tuned in a, in a and tuned into a, er, into a singing bowl, or even a higher octave in the trigon. So when we have this frequency, what happens is that all our cells are resonating with this frequency and it's resonating with the earth spinning around itself. So whatever experience you have is your experience because it's different for all of us living on the planet. But if we go back in time and if we think of us being in a process of evolution, so it is with no question that um, the first realization that time actually is happening is by the change of day and night. So when we uh, trace back our own evolution or if we consider, think, think, imagine ourselves being in the womb, being a one particular cell and moving from there. So because when we, get, when we live our individual life, we, we recapulate all the way of evolution with our personal being. So having the frequencies of the first realization as a starting part is for sure a very good build, uh, 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 well, a plan to build on the next levels of a house. And if you want to build a house of your life, and if you want to build up an understanding of frequencies, so my suggestion is to start in the beginning of the beginning, which is the frequency of the Earth's day. So below you find all kind of informations where you can, can get further information, but basically get your tuning fork, get a singing bowl and make your experiment with that. Okay, and I'm sure you will enjoy this. And so now after you have, after you got yourself back into the here and now, and now you feel the strengths of reality, and you said, oh my God, if I want to come along in this life, some, some uh, uh, being involved in this weird, suspicious, underground sound music culture, I should know about the way the business works and I should be on the hottest news. So here we are, the hottest news. Well, is there anything hotter than the, let me show you again. This is like the, you know, like the, it's about networking. So the hottest news was Butterfly Wings, the new book by Martin Blazer. And you know, like it's about networking. So it's few copies only. It's, it's, it's the first one is limited edition. So get your, get your personal copy, you know, do some uh, uh, support the economy of one of the most important sound craftsmen on this age, of these times. So, but now you think, okay, if I think in terms of business, what is, how can I get it? And well, it's, uh, sound music is not one, one perspective or one option is, it happens in a one-to-one -one situation. But as beyond this, there are, uh, it's a community concert, community gatherings. And now I want to invite you to have a very close look to something that is happening these days. And I consider the, the event that you, you are going to see right now being a new focus or epicenter in the global world of sound.
Mahala Berlin, Mahala Berlin. Just type it into Google and you will see. It's an amazing new location uh, rented and set up and organized by a German filmmaker. His name is Ralf Schmerberg. And just recently, a couple of years ago, he changed his life from being just a, 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 like, a, like, a like a filmmaker. Uh, he opened up a music, uh, let's say, a group a mu called Music Ashram. And we all... We are all absolutely aware that Berlin has been a spot, a, a, initiate, a, a, a spot point for new development in culture times before. And now, so this is the first time there is a huge location that's dedicated for sound, presentation of sounds. And this particular space, the Mahalar, was legend uh, uh, over 150 years ago because it has been the first uh, exhibition space for electrical gear like generators and the famous movie Metropolis by Fritz Lang was inspired exactly or I think it even happened in this space that you have just seen. So Mahala Berlin is a new space where it's like a well you just want to be sure that you get there and see it as consider it as a as a temple for sound music or inspiration because this is, if you want to set up a business, there are lots of locations that have no use anymore. So you should start a communication, you know, like, like and, and, or maybe just squat one of them, but it's maybe a little bit of too much uh, activity. But um, find a way to spot industrial, um, uh, let's say, uh, ruins that are not functioning anymore and get some activities together and build your business from the stress, from the scratch, but have a look at, uh, at, at, at Mahala Berlin. So, and on the way, now looking in terms of business, like this magazine is kind of underground. I can see from the very little subscribers and very little viewers. So I'm very, I'm very thankful actually that you are watching and I don't mind uh, sharing the magazine if you think it's something that you feel like could be shared. And, but for you being a sound music professional and if you think of how do you, uh, can you rise your business or how can you improve your business? Well, get your homework done. Make your homework, like for example, get your presence on social media. Like for example, our friend Jana from Dubai, she's a sound worker and she had a very great presentation on her Instagram, which met Meinl, which met Meinl connecting her and now she is representing Meinl and when she has her guests, her clients, she could deliver like instrument products to, her, to the sound lovers. And I've seen, uh, it's, it's normal that if you have a business, you have a sideline business that comes that fits to the other one. So if you have singing bowl that comes to Christmas and instead buying all kinds of funny things, buy singing bowls, buy tuning forks. And before it comes to the point you deliver the products, then well, you connect with the, uh, the producers, you connect with the distributors, but um, you're supposed to be fine in your social media presence and have a look at how Jana is doing it. If I would have more time, I would love to do it on TikTok. And it's uh, I've never even done it on Clubhouse before. This is so interesting what all medias come up with. Of course, I appreciate if you say, no, it's not my cup of tea. I want to sit in Copangan under the palm tree and see, wait for the coconut to fall down. And in between, I look to the fishermen when they go to the sea. And then I play a gong for them to return back safe. Perfect life. Really go for it. Yes? It's beautiful. Okay. So, and then of course, uh, so when you're on the way to Berlin, anyhow, because you want to get a, it's not, it's not going to be open before 2022. Okay. So don't come before the time. But if you still want to come uh, close to Berlin, we have one spot in the year where we recommend all of you to come because it's about networking at its best. It's, you, get, you come with your skills, you come with your visions, you meet uh, friends, you team up. And we had some careers that started right there. People brought their 
vision there and they got successful because they met exactly the people that fitted to them and they started and improved the efficiency of the networks. So I wish, I want to see you add. What so many great memories. This festival is my favorite. Like being a sound musician, I was involved in so many festivals uh, like all over and I really in, uh, I, I, I like everything about a festival. And I think the festival is a great opportunity to come together, join together and be yourself in a way you really want to be yourself and you know, be together with uh, friends and same-minded people, same-hearted people. And uh, well, I want I I want to see I, I want to see the, all of you at New Healing Festival, right? Wonderful. So now, but we, then we have the the vision of the great staff. But now, getting back, it's a sound magazine. It's about being practical. So, and there is one very important part department. Uh, without that, sound music wouldn't be possible. <laughs> the mallet signs by this way uh, actually there's so much to say about mallet and last time where is it i uh, last time i spoke about the the uh, uh, the new mallet from marimba with the special caoutchouc layers and the metal hat and it's it's and, and even it's just not even one month or uh, when this started and i'm still in the process you know, like it's 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 so interesting because every the more mallets you have the more variety you have and like using the mallet as a, of course it doesn't it wouldn't work without a mallet and uh, by the way like uh, like uh, I have I just want to share with you I have this is one of my favorite favorite mallets ha huh. It's a dragonfly. I got it as a present from Mr. Mitch Schnur. And Mitch, it's my favorite mallet for sure. Because like playing the Cosmic Travers from Martin and the same, like in the integral sound work, we, we, we're not doing it like this. You know, not, we are not hitting instrument. We are, we are using the swing. Or we, are, we are transforming gravity force into gra gravity draw into gravity swing. So it's not the hands playing, it's all the movements coming from the body, transferring the whole resonance effect on the mallet, on the instruments, which makes a more warm, organic sound, okay? So, but now, researching mallet and being thankful for all sorts of inspiration and fascinated what comes up from professional mallet makers, I want to point out on something that just blew my mind. So, uh, when, you, when you are, for those who are watching and or used to watch my, my, uh, my videos, Gong How to Play, then you're all aware that I am a huge fan of the tremolo mallets. And one of the dogmas is if you are a Gong 
player, a gong musician, and you don't have a pair of Melodrohemer Timpani ET423. Something in your life is missing, right? Because like the way to get the gong humming vibration, uh, vibrating and, and approaching the, the surfers and with very light movements, very, it's, it's, it's a perfect training mallet and even having these mallets in the beginning of a gong meditation, a gong concert, is, is, is very great for, you know, like uh, to arrange yourself getting into it. But now, oh my, I, I got this. This is something, ha, huh. Mitch, you want to be sure you have this mallet. It's called Lunar Tiny and it's made by Gong Planet. Gong Planet is an Italian guy, uh, Fabio, and he's, he's specialized on making mallets. And, and what is new about it is that, of course, it's always about the inside. It's always how the mallet head sticks with the grip. But now what he did is he made a kind of caoutchouc inside. So when you go to the gong, and now as you have a, now, I mean, of course, from the perspective of the integral sound work, so it is not that the one stroke gets the gong excited. No, it's kind of, uh, it's, a, it's a repetitive encounter that in the, one of my videos was called the ropopopopo effect, right? So which simply means that the mallet of the, uh, the head of the mallet bounces like a tennis ball on the gong and then, and then with strengthening like the, the, the pinky, getting it to the bounce, get, get the bounce flip done then this is a way to build up the vibration of the gong so the gong can unfold in an organic way. So, and this never ever worked so perfect as with the, the gong planet mallets and particularly lunar tiny. There's some more around. It's always complex. It always takes time. It's never easy. It's, and, but so if you just want to get the good stuff, go check gong planet. Lunar tiny 24 inch to 42 inch size gong, so it's even a variety. And since I know this gong mallet, I am even more happy. I was a happy gong player before, but now I'm a more happy gong player. And now I met Fabio in Italy, and yes, Italy was my last travel almost. Well, there was a now we are in the third lockdown wave. And in, I think, between number two and three, there was kind of lockdown-free time winter. And I took the time to get to Italy to meet some friends there that, uh, by the way, I met on the Gong Summit. Thank you to Mitch having this friend. So I went there and just have a look yourself.
Oh, my heart is overflowing with uh, memories of its best. So what a beautiful gathering and being at Grotta Sonora uh, meeting Margarita and Madhava. So what a couple and what a story and what a perfect example of a really authentic sound music where the history of both, this both of the couple and family uh, uh, history coming together and creating a, a uh, environment or a space where instruments are developed and are presented and are played. So they are covering all of it. And I've seen instruments that I uh, used to hear in my dreams, which was my reason to do sound music because it was this music that I could hear in my dreams. And I wanted this music to be in the in the here and now, I wanted this music to be available. And so when I entered that cave, it was exactly, I, I felt like being in a dream, but it was, it was real. So whenever you come to Europe or you go to Italy, have a visit at uh, a Grotto Sonora and meet and explore these beautiful instruments. Or I hope they are coming to the new healing festival as well. So speaking about sound music, we have so many aspects. We have the, the makers of the instruments. Yes, we have the locations, we have our instruments itself, we have tools, but of course then we have the personalities. And we are, so, we, so we, I, I created a new uh, a chapter, particularly with person whom I would suggest that you date them as soon as you can. Yes, so your sound date or klang date, sound klang, German word is klang, is Peter Herren. Peter Herren is a, he's, a, he's, he's working as an organist in, a, in the church and, and he is a passionate gong musician as well as a serious composer and he's a dirigent. He's, he's doing great shows with, you know, presenting Beethoven symphonies and his passion is gong music, gong playing, and he's playing all over the churches in North Germany, and he is, uh, and he's, he's exceptionally ready to explore sound culture beyond the borders of traditions. And he's my, well, he's one of my favorite gong musicians for sure, and his compositions, I have one here, this, the year before, it's like <laughs> English, be like a deer. You know, it's, it's, it's fantastic composition and it's the CD that I listened the most to of any from last year's. I mean, I'm aware that we don't have CDs anymore. Uh, it's, it's all virtual, you know, no more products. But this is a, in Germany, we are so old school. We have still have CDs, sorry for that. So his came out with his new, uh, his new uh, composition, Studies for Planetary Gong Symphony. Peter Herren, Urschall, and Klangstrom, which is like um, a primor primordial sound and um, sound stream. So this is very inspirational um, musician, a very inspirational artist, uh, and you can check off, check him on, on YouTube. You could see his presentations there, and it's a musician that I really re recommend. And now, um, uh, like. Uh, in his booklet is very interesting texts, and uh, but I, I will I will uh, today I will not be able to translate them because he had a, a, a artist friend creating some texts. They are amazing as they 
music is, is, is amazing. But what he's pointing out in the text is that the, uh, the origin of contemporary artists, uh, like for Kandinsky, who started the modern abstract painting, like for all of them and others uh, of his time, time mates, time team, they all were aware and they were completely sure that um, spiritual dimensions existed at that time. And they were communicating with scientists and with um, physicists, and there was no, no doubt of that. So what somehow, what happened that we got a discrepance of things that used to be normal, or looked upon as being normal, and now are not normal anymore? Well, and so we need a kind of revival of being, uh, being connected. So, so, and we are looking for words, so sound music, is now the genre after rock music, pop music, techno music. Now sound music is the new big thing. And people who are doing it are visionists. Visionists of, yeah, what? Of people being connected in a more holistic way or in a, more, in a way that is more appropriate to, uh, to, to resonate with what I would call a human potential. So like... We want a cultural presentation where, yes, people can be people and not just consumers of products, something like that. Well, you make up your own mind, like this is why finally it goes back to sound music. Then in the sound music, you understand it, you see it, you don't um, need to explain it or even understand. You will just be it. And so I'm always happy uh, to, to, to get to the and where it's all about sharing. And I want to share you the good stuff that I come along to. And so I have my favorite game uh, ready for you now. It's not a shaker. Guess what is in the box? Last time I screwed it up with the sound, you could hear it. Now, this time it is not possible. You will not be able to hear what is in this box. And if you have any idea, of course, it has to do with sound music. It's uh, the only hint it. It's good for tantric purposes. Okay, and if you have any idea, you write it down in the comment. And if you are close or better, you name the instruments that's in this box, you might win a prize, a beautiful prize. Uh, I'll, actually, I will do my best to make the prize beautiful and very soundish. Yes, so thank you for today. Thank you for being with me. You feel free to like it, subscribe, tell your friends, meet me in the sound magazine or ask whatever you want to ask. And I'm happy to see you again. Thank you very much.